Joystick Move is probably the most utilized input style. Almost any config built around X input will use this in it, as the input style is how you bind a joystick to any of the input sources. That's right, this input style joins the directional pad in an exclusive group of styles that are used on all five of the input sources that support input styles. Since it can be used on both analog and digital input sources, I have to explain how each work. On an analog input source, like a joystick or touchpad, the output can be viewed as having direction and speed. You can send output in 360 degrees of direction and in various outputs of speed, which is visualized here as distance from the center. When joystick move is used on a digital input source, like a directional pad or face buttons, we lose all of the fine control. Now we can only send values in the core eight directions, and the distance from the center is always the maximum output. So, when do you use joystick move? That's simple. Whenever you need to bind an X input joystick to something. And despite its name, you could bind either the left or the right joystick with joystick move. Now that we know what it is and when to use it, let's dig into the settings. The main page of options is deceptively sparse. Ignoring the mode shift and haptics, which we'll of course talk about in a future episode because they are rather large topics, we only have four settings here. Output allows us to define which joystick is being bound, either the left or the right. Typically, the left joystick controls movement while the right controls the camera. There is a third option, though, relative mouse, and it allows you to control the mouse cursor with the joystick style of input using a direction and a speed. This might sound a bit odd, but it's become quite popular in the AAA sphere. Destiny, Assassin's Creed, God of War, and even the original Smash Bros. uses this concept to navigate menus. As for when to use each setting, left and right joysticks are used whenever you need to bind those joysticks. As for relative mouse, it's a fairly redundant setting when we have an entire input style dedicated to doing the exact same thing, joystick mouse, which we'll cover in episode 10. So I'd have to say that I would never use it on the basis that it can make a config difficult to read. Joystick move typically means X input to most people, while joystick mouse says exactly what it does. Click action assigns a binding to an input source's physical click, such as pressing the joystick or touchpad into the controller. There really is no wrong way to use this binding since it doesn't interfere or interact with the rest of the input source. A popular industry standard is to put sprint on the click of your left joystick. As a note, Digital input sources don't have a secondary click and thus can't activate this binding. Output axis determines which axes will be bound and which will do nothing. Horizontal only will only send left and right output. Vertical only will only send up and down output. And both vertical and horizontal will send both. For most games, you can leave it on the default both horizontal and vertical, but there are a couple of occasions where it could be beneficial to remove an axis. If you wanted your gyro to only control the camera along the x-axis, then you could set your gyro to use joystick mouse with the output set to right joystick for camera control and then set this to horizontal only. Or maybe you're playing a racing game and want to make sure that you are only sending left and right output. Outer ring binding assigns a binding to be activated when the input has reached a specific distance from the center. You can imagine a ring existing near this edge of your touchpad or joystick. As long as you move inside of the circle, the binding isn't activated. Move outside of it and you'll activate the binding. For games that have a boost or run mechanic, this is a great place for it. It makes the change from normal movement to fast movement a natural progression of moving your thumb further up the input source. As for digital input sources, I would generally avoid assigning a binding here since it will always be activated because digital bindings always activate with maximum value. The gyro has two unique settings on the main page, gyro enable button and gyro button behavior. The enable button determines which button on your gamepad will handle gyro activation, and button behavior determines how that button will activate the gyro. The default for gyro enable button is always on, which means that your gyro will always be on. So if your gyro is set up as a left joystick, then rotating your controller will move your character around at all times. 
If you would rather have your gyro disabled sometimes, then set the enable button to any button on the controller. For this example, I'll use Y. The button behavior would then determine what Y does to the gyro. Setting this to on means that the gyro will only be activated when I'm holding the Y button. Setting this to off means the gyro will always be activated unless I'm holding the Y button. And toggle means that the Y button will switch the gyro between on and off with each press. A good use for this would be enabling gyro driving in an open world game. Set the enable button to whatever button is used to enter vehicles and set the behavior to toggle. Now when you enter a vehicle, the gyro will be activated, and when you leave the vehicle, it will be disabled. That's it for the main page. Now let's hit up the additional settings and whoa! That's quite a bit of settings. Let's uh well let's start from the top. Stick response curve alters the ratio between the input values and output values. Linear is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that the game will see exactly what you are doing with your controller. If you push the joystick halfway to the outside, then the game will see a 50% value in that direction. Aggressive is a higher ratio, which means there is less space on the joystick to achieve lower values, and you'll hit the higher values more quickly. Relaxed, wide, and extra wide consist of varying degrees of lower ratios, which means there is more space on the joystick to achieve lower values, and you'll hit the higher values more slowly. If neither of these settings feel good enough, there is a custom curve option that adds a new slider, custom response curve. The default here is a 1 to 1 ratio, just like the linear setting, but now you can move the slider down for lower ratios or up for higher ones. For the next few settings, we'll need a basic understanding of what a dead zone is. On a joystick, a dead zone is part of the joystick that doesn't send input. They are used near the center of the joystick to make sure that small, unintended movements don't get registered in-game. Steam Input has two types of dead zones, inner and outer. Inner defines the space that doesn't send input, while outer defines the space that sends a full input. Both of these can be visualized as circles expanding out from the center of the joystick or touchpad, with the full analog range being the space between the two circles. However, maybe you don't want to use a circle shape to define these areas. Dead zone shape allows you to change the shape of the inner dead zone between the aforementioned circle, a square, or a cross. The circle and the square are both used in the same situation, but handle diagonal input differently due to the outer dead zone always being a circle. The circle grants equal distance between the inner and outer zones in all directions, while the square has less space for input in a diagonal. There is a third shape, cross. It prioritizes cardinal direction input by placing dead zones around the four main directions. For the cross shape, as long as you are inside of the shaded area, you will send only the direction that you are pressing and not a diagonal. If you've ever tried to navigate a menu or a skill tree and thought you only pressed right, but you also moved up or down a section, then the cross shape will fix that up nicely. This mode also has a circle dead zone in the cross section that registers no input. Invert horizontal and vertical axis is for swapping the outputs of each axis. Horizontal swaps left and right, while vertical swaps up and down. Inverting the vertical axis is a fairly common technique in first-person shooters or flight sims, but I can't say that I know of any instances where I would want to swap the horizontal axis. The sensitivity scale settings provide the user with per-axis sensitivity. If you want to aim left and right at a different speed than looking up and down, then this is how you'll do it. When the bar is at full, it will have 100% of the in-game sensitivity. As the bar moves to the left, this percentage drops, reducing the sensitivity of that axis. For example, if you wanted your up and down aiming to be slower than your turning speed, then you will reduce the vertical scale. Remember the outer ring binding? These next two settings control how that activates. Outer ring binding radius dictates how close to the edge you need to get to activate the outer ring binding. This is best visualized with the circle within the joystick or touchpad. When the setting is at 0%, the binding will always be activated, 
and at 100% it will only activate when the joystick is pushed all the way to the edge or the user's thumb is at the very edge of the touchpad. Outer ring binding invert makes it so that the outer ring binding is activated whenever the joystick or user's thumb is within the circle, disabling it when you go past the circle. Output Anti-Dead Zone is a setting that helps deal with dead zones that are too large. It does this by adding to the minimum input value so that even the smallest movement will not be registered by the game. The Anti-Dead Zone buffer is used to create a new dead zone, one to the user's preference, once you find the perfect setting for the Anti-Dead Zone. To use this, you'll want to increase the anti-dead zone until barely moving the joystick or placing your thumb on the center of the touchpad causes input in the game. You'll be looking for an exact value here, so trial and error with minor adjustments is best. Once that is set, move the buffer to the right a bit until the input doesn't feel overly responsive. Steam input provides visual representations for these which should help this trial and error process. Anti-Dead Zone has a yellow circle, and you ideally want this to be the exact same size as the game's dead zone. Except that usually we don't know that kind of info, so it doesn't really help here. But the buffer has a gray circle, and this shows how large your new custom dead zone will be. This aid is helpful since you can see the relationship between your new dead zone and your anti-dead zone. Next up is Gyro Lock at Edges which I'm fairly certain is supposed to be a gyro only setting. This determines what the gyro output is when you rotate the controller too far in a direction. When it is set to off, the gyro may flip to the opposite direction if you rotate it past a certain point. If you've ever played a racing game with a gyro controller and noticed your vehicle turning the opposite direction during tight corners, this is probably why. The gyro output has reached the value that is assigned to the other side of the axis, so the game thinks you have slammed your joystick in the opposite direction. Enabling gyro lock at edges will remember your last input when you rotate the controller too far and lock that input in place until you unrotate your controller. However, this has the potential to make it feel like your output gets stuck if you aren't unrotating past the lock spot. And the final setting is gyro pitch neutral angle, which determines what the centered position of the gyro is for the vertical axis. If you hold your controller with a slight tilt or drop, then adjust this until up or down inputs aren't being sent when you are holding your controller in your neutral position. And that's the joystick move input style, one of the most important and most used styles. Joystick move is my personal idea of a perfect input style. For most games, you can simply pick the style and start playing, making it easy to set up for most users. But there are enough settings to tweak that allow for an advanced user to expertly craft a specific feel for the joystick output. Not to mention that all the basic settings are on the main page, while the additional settings house the advanced options. So the next time that you build a config using X input and you throw your joystick move setting on a joystick or touchpad, Maybe go ahead into the advanced settings and see if there's something that you might tweak to make the controller feel more personalized and better suited to you.